Foreign Commissar Molotov of Russia arrives at Blair House in Washington, where he was the government's guest prior to his departure for the World Security Conference at San Francisco. He confers with Anthony Eden and Secretary Statinius during his stay at the Capitol. The Soviet Foreign Minister came to the United States at the direct invitation of President Truman to assist other members of the Security Conference in reaching a closer understanding. This 110-inch airplane tire is about to get the most severe test it's possible to give. At Wright Field Laboratories, a 370,000-pound steel wheel is revolved at 180 miles per hour, creating a gigantic braking power which is carefully measured. At the proper moment, the tire is pushed against the wheel, absorbing a shock many times greater than that of a landing plane. This rubber was torn loose in the first grinding impact before the flywheel was slowed down. Weighing three quarters of a ton, some idea of the size of this giant may be gained by comparison with the standard tire of a B-17 and the tire of a Cub plane. Another army experiment in safety. A crowd of 30,000 assembles to see the last B-17 roll from the assembly line of the Boeing Seattle plant. Henceforth, this factory will be devoted exclusively to the production of B-29 superports. Stickers commemorate the thousands of missions on which the flying forts have performed so gallantly throughout the world. Salute to a great airplane. Entering the final phase of victory over Hitler's Nazis, Yank armies swarm across western Germany, bringing devastation to cities of the Reich. From all sides, Allied might crushes in on the remains of the Wehrmacht, bringing home the horrors of war to the German people as they have never experienced it before. The white flag of surrender flies all along the battle-torn route as our fast-moving armies sweep to a junction with the Russians. German medical units handle casualties as captured Folkstrom troops swell the total of a million prisoners taken during the last... As the Yanks arrive, civilians turn out to wonder at the fate that awaits a conquered nation. A Burgermeister addresses a civilian gathering, but German morale breaks down and unruly crowds loot wrecked stores. Signal Corps cameramen film the looting of freight and passenger cars loaded with civilian and military goods. Other pictures showing the drive on Berlin were taken by newsreel cameramen. American MPs handle the traffic problem. Scrap metal from wrecked airplanes and German telephone equipment were being hauled in this wrecked train of 75 cars. Graveyard such as this one, where the Gestapo buried 30,000 Russians in three and a half years, are only one result of mass starvation and brutality encountered by the Yanks. Prison camps and forced labor camps took a heavy toll of millions of miserable people enslaved by the Nazis. These girls suffered incredible hardships when forced to work in German munitions factories. Slave workers who came from many parts of Europe. Each girl wore a number tattooed on her arm. And here is stark evidence of German torture. Yellow identifying crosses were daubed in their clothing. Thousands of these unhappy humans are being freed daily by the Allied armies. Years of privation left their mark on these men. 
gathering for cigarettes and to receive instructions from British and American military authorities. The Yanks get a rousing welcome. Among the crowds in the square, a Russian girl spots a Gestapo agent in civilian clothes posing as a Dutchman. He's quickly hustled off to jail. In France, three million families wait eagerly for their loved ones to return. Some of them have been gone for five years, and mixed feelings of joy and sadness greet the trains returning with the war prisoners. Such pitiful family reunions are reminders of the devastation and horror visited on the world by the Axis. Falling to our advancing armies is the storied city of Heidelberg, famed for its great university. Once a great center of German culture, the university attracted the patronage of wealthy Americans who contributed this building, captioned to the German spirit by the Nazis. American reporters uncovered the plaque which the Nazis had removed, listing the donors, names familiar to all Americans. It was progressive Americans who helped maintain Heidelberg just to have Nazi supermen grind culture under their heels. The watch on the Rhine has taken on added significance in this war. This time as our soldiers see the star-spangled banner unfurled, they know that the Allies will police Germany until militarism is stamped out. General Omar Bradley gives personal thanks to his men at this point near Koblenz. It was after a slight pause here that his armies loosed the full fury of the attack on the Reich. Just what they have done, including General Patton's men, is history. The stars and stripes fly in victory over conquered German soil. <laughs>